A lot of parts are required in order to get your pop bumper working appropriately. I've already got two out of the three ready to go. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, how's that? This is the one I'm gonna be doing now. The easiest way to go about doing this is to have obviously no other obstacles in your way. So this is the ideal scenario whenever you are assembling your pop bumper, when there's nothing in the way. A lot of the times that is not gonna be the case, but in this way, I figured this is gonna be a good way to show you how to assemble one when I've got no other obstacles in my way. So let's flip this thing over. First thing you wanna do is make sure that this is in the correct orientation. This needs to be in the correct orientation and everything that you build up, you need to remember that this is gonna to have to go in like so. So just remember those two big holes that feeds the rods. Then these holes feed your light bulb. So these need to be able to go all the way through as well. So keep that in mind. And then the other two holes are for your wood screws to mount that sucker to the play field so it's not rocking and moving around. Once you have this in place, the next thing you need to do is apply your little spring. That's gonna bounce your skirt up. Keep this thing all nice and bouncy right here. Springs in place. Let's get the skirt in the appropriate position. Now, like I said, if you just throw this in here, let's just say like this. Yay, it's in there, right? But again, orientation, people, orientation. Make sure that you've got your holes open right there. Now, this is something that's going to be a little controversial because not all the bodies are the same size. So typically, the next piece would be your rod because sometimes this rod is not able to fit over this body. So the rod needs to go in first and then the body sometimes, but these just happen to be the appropriate shape and these rods and the circles seem to be the perfect size for me to be able to feed things through without any issues. With that being the case, I'm going to be installing the body next. I'm just gonna line this sucker up and feed it like that. Once again, orientation folks. Now I'm going to be screwing in the wood screws to get that body locked down. And with the magic of editing, wood screws are in place. This pop bumper body is now secure. Let's go ahead and run these through. Get my lighting in position. One handed, oh man. And then we may have to flip it over if I can't to see if I've got any obstructions. And yes, I do. So this is going to be the interesting part. I'm going to feed this through this wire, this direction. I want these leads to my GI to spread like you see on the other ones over here. left to right. And then eventually these are gonna have to be bent and then stapled down and then I'm gonna have to solder the GI to it. Now this is gonna be difficult to do with one hand so I'm gonna have to do some more editing here. All right, there we go. So, it's in there. All right, now. <clears throat> This is where we start throwing a bunch more parts. In order for me to really get this installed, I'm going to have to remove this coil because I can't get the, uh, the actual solenoid rod in there unless this coil is off. So let's remove this coil. So this is the ideal situation. You got your metal yoke, plastic yoke. This is going to go into 
this should have a big enough hole to get that sucker in there like that all right i don't have the coil actually bolted down or anything yet but that is in the appropriate position but nothing's really locked in place yet until i get this sucker through the other side of the play field to lock into these holes so that's the orientation that it goes in you got your metal yolk plastic yolk then your spring now let's get this uh, rod through the play field get it on this side over here there it is Now this is gonna be difficult with one hand, so once again, magic of editing, I'm gonna feed these rods through the holes that are on the yolks. And there we go. Now I just need to attach the uh, washer and nuts to these rods and then bolt the other side of my coil in place and this thing should be done. There you have it. Pop bumper is assembled. Now time to attach the actual switch for it. Now I've got the switch essentially just kind of like screwed in because that's the thing out there. You can see there's a lot of slack in how this can be tightened down and that is for a reason because you want to be able to tweak the positioning of the yoke to the stem of the skirt tail to get that centered as well as you can now once again this is going to be difficult with one hand so let me get this a little more snug i've got it snug in place now i want this to be able to be visible with a switch contact so that would make the pop bumper pull down once that contact touches like that, that causes this solenoid to activate and push down, which causes the ball to shoot out. So what I want is no matter which side of the skirt I'm touching, that contact is able to make easy contact. And that looks pretty good to me. And depending on how big that gap is between the two contacts on that leaf switch, Depends on how reactive your pop bumpers are going to be. If I wanted to get those a little closer together, that would make this pop bumper even more sensitive to touch. But I want to make sure that this pop bumper is able to freely move all the way around the skirt without it getting stuck on any kind of side or anything like that. And it looks pretty good to me. And that, folks, is how you assemble a pop bumper. Let's talk about wood rails. The portions that go on the outer perimeter and next to the shooter lane on your playfield. Now, typically on this machine, they have like a black coating. It's not really a coating, it's more of a veneer that can just be peeled away. Mine was all messed up. So I am stripping that veneer away and I'm going to be sanding these smooth again and painting them black and with a nice shiny clear coat. To go on top of that. A method you could go about doing on this is slowly but surely peeling it away but I'm using a heat gun to loosen the adhesive and then it comes away a lot smoother and that's what I'm working on now. Heat gun stripped away all that black veneer on these wood rails. Now to get them sanded and then I've got to use some putty some Bondo on certain areas that have taken some damage. Where's the other portion? There's some other areas here that I'm gonna have to get all patched up before I can begin any kind of a paint. So, ah, I think that's it right there, yeah. That's where the ball keeps jumping out and hitting right there whenever it ejects. Not anymore, it's gonna be like that. 
Okay, after sanding these wood rails a little bit, came to the realization just how bad they are. Uh, and I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna putty and bondo these little wood rails like this. That, it's just not worth it. Uh, I'm gonna make all new ones. So I'm gonna get a hold of my buddy Jason, and once again, he's gonna lend me a hand, and we're gonna get all new wood rails. Got some new wood rails made up and I've got them screwed in up underneath this wood right here so that way they do not fall over. And we're just gonna be cryloning this up with a gloss black. I've got a test piece out of curiosity with a cherry red. I don't think it's gonna look good, but I figured, you know, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. So that's just a test piece. Time to install brand new light sockets. Man. All right, I have got all of the new flasher bulb sockets installed. On to the standard 44s. The way I'm going about this is I'm starting from essentially the top portion of the play field. Got all the uh, boards right here. This controls the supercharger and stuff. And I'm just working my way this direction. And once I get the switches, then it's on to some GI bulbs. And uh, yeah, just working my way around. It's gonna be a task. This is what I've got going on so far when it comes to my wire management. Now, this is not a typical thing that you would see on a getaway, let alone a pinball machine in general. I'm not saying I'm the first, but I'm one of the few that is gonna be going through and just making it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to the eye, especially when I'm dealing with all of this mess down here. Goodness gracious. And uh, in case I haven't already shown you, this is why I'm getting all new bulb sockets for like my flashers and GI bulbs. This is what happens guys when you do wet sanding and don't clean up afterwards or do not mask very well. This is what you get. Okay, we are getting further along now. Uh, still got a while to go, but it's uh, definitely in the making. Um, this is a task that is definitely uh, keeping me busy. Work continues. Mm -hmm. 